This is Jana Wild and Cat Hawk, and, and together, together we're seeking the middle path. Hello, hey everyone! Welcome <laughs> to the middle path. All right, so today we want to talk about well, we both grew up in the Mormon Church. And we were up with the word, the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so we wanted to talk about these experiences uh, we maybe had or didn't have with the Holy Ghost, Mm -hmm. but also how um, that compares with our experiences now practicing intuition. Yeah. And like maybe the different words, like you were just saying, like intuition, your instinct, and then the word, the Holy Ghost, or maybe um, like for me now, I, I say spirit or I say my guides. Um, so what it, what is all of that and how, how can you have this type of relationship outside of being a Mormon? Yeah. Like spiritual experiences and how that shifts and changes as we shift and change and how the words we use for these experiences change. Yeah. And what do these words mean when people use them? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, you know, I was taught and I'm sure Jana too was taught that you couldn't have any of this outside of being Mormon. Like you can't have the Holy ghost unless you're Mormon and baptized in the church, which is not true. (laughs) Yeah. Um, it was something that was like special exclusive VIP membership for me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, it feels like ownership to me, owning a part of your own divine right to be spiritual or have a spiritual experience. Like that feels like them controlling and owning you. It feels like spiritual abuse to me. Yeah. I mean, it is. I I think that's part of the manipulation and abuse. And it's something that you see in cults as well, where they use words in special ways. And there is this feeling of like specialness being within the group versus without. Yeah. It it happens while you're in church. It's, and then you get those tingly feelings, which you get outside of being Mormon or Christian, but they use that. So it's almost like yeah, it's a manipulation. It's a control of your emotional state, your your mind. So you feel like you can only have that when you're inside this building or um, constitution, which is... Or being worthy. Or being worthy. Oh, yeah. Because God, then yes. they put it on you too. But before like, we okay. talk about all of that, like, what are the words and how are we using them? Because mm-hmm. that... How do you even know what we're talking about if you don't know what how we define these words, right? Yeah. So... So there is this idea of like outside of Mormonism, right? Outside of Christianity, outside of religion even. I think that most humans um, believe that we have instincts. Mm -hmm. Like the animals have instincts and that people are animals and we have instincts. Yeah, so we we all come with an instinct. I mean, even the urge to sexually... Reproduce, right? That's instincts. <laughs> yeah, or like you feel like that feeling in your gut, like something's wrong. Yeah, like or the the when you get the um, goosebumps on your mm-hmm. back, like the chills up your spine, mm-hmm. or that feeling someone's looking at you. Yeah. So I mean, how, or you're in danger. We all have had that feeling of like, oh, someone's looking at me, mm-hmm. and then you look, and, and you're like, are. hi, and they're like, oh, whoo, hi, yeah. <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> Yeah, Uh, and so instinct, I think, is definitely a word that's relevant in all of this. Yeah, and then we have our intuition, uh, which I think a lot of times we can confuse. Uh, Instinct and intuition come together, but they are separate. Intuition is like a very deep knowing that you have. It's like you just know. We all have that. Sometimes we don't want to follow what we know because it means doing something scary yeah. Or changing something in our life, but you just know, like, I have to do this. Yeah, I feel like intuition um, is more cre- connected with um, 
our mind and our mm-hmm. emotions. Yeah. Like, and it feels more spiritual to me. Like intuition feels more like a spiritual feeling. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to define. Or yeah, put a word to. it is. I connect a lot to my intuition through meditation because I ground into my body and then I visually open up my channels to open up to what I like to call the universe or the divine, which is my higher up there. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that intuition is maybe a little harder to access than instincts mm-hmm. because intuition, it's, it's more like I access that place when I'm meditating yeah. or it's that feeling of the water going clear. Mm-hmm. Like uh, it's when you get out of all the chaos and the emotions. Yes, yeah. it's hard um, to find it. The thought patterns mm-hmm. and you're able to just yeah. be like, oh, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. When you calm the waters, I like how you said that. It's like when things are calm, when you find stillness within you, you can check in with those, maybe those instincts you keep getting, maybe those sensations you keep getting, and you can check in with your intuition. And it's like this higher knowing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, this is what it is that's going on. This is what I need to do, or this is what I want in my life. Yeah, and sometimes it is. It's just like a knowing that might not make logical mm-hmm. sense. Like sometimes mothers just know the gender of their baby. Yeah. They just know. They're like, I just knew. Yeah. I just knew I was having a girl. Well, and that's that's more intuition than instinct. Yeah, and I think... I feel like now it's so hard to trust your intuition because so many people cause doubt in you. Like, what do you know if you're well, going to have a even girl instincts? Yeah, I mean, I think we just are a society that loves to gaslight people, oh. and so we doubt <laughs> yeah. even our like perception of things yeah. that have happened mm-hmm. that are instinct or intuition. We just like, I don't know, was that real? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're we're so disconnected. Um, so it does take a little work <laughs> to. Yeah. Come back to these things and to trust yourself. It's a trust too. To trust yourself, to trust your knowing Mm -hmm. and instinct, intuition, definitely part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Or or some, sometimes we just know, we just know like what is meant for us. Like I just, I just know I'm supposed to be a musician or I just know that I'm a writer or I know that I need to work in the field of medicine. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times we just know these things about ourselves, even from a very young age. And then like, world gaslights us and then we don't even follow it (laughs) yeah and we don't follow our instinct intuition our our knowing Mm -hmm. and so I think a lot of the healing journey when it comes to recovering from high demand religion is learning to trust yourself yeah again retrust yourself because a lot of times you're always seeking out outside resources which is like a church or a person in the church, um, like for us, it was like a bishop or a, yeah. one of our teachers. Instead of you just, you know. You just know. You, you know. So it's it's here. You have mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So, and then I think the other layer there is that we each have our own inner moral compass. Mm-hmm. Like even kids from a very young age come with a, like a sense of justice, a sense of right and wrong. Yeah. You just know. We know when to not kill someone. And- and if we need to, we just know it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, like I think there are certain things that just everybody knows when they see it that that, that was wrong. Yeah, and you just, you know if you're going to do it, you just feel awful. So. And it wasn't something that anyone had to explain to you or no, teach you. It's you just, just know. You it's just there. Come with we it. come with it. So don't murder. <laughs> <laughs> don't lie. Yeah. Don't steal. Don't cheat, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, so we wanted to talk about all this because of the the fact of when you are brought up in um, the Mormon religion or culture, there's so much around being worthy enough to receive all these things or also the Holy Ghost, which is to me just like a higher being or spirit or spirit guide, whatever it is you need to call it word to use for it. It's, it's false. Like it's no, you do not need to be baptized in any religion in order to receive these things. So you're saying that we just like innately have what they call the Holy ghost. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can have it, whether it's inside your home and you're meditating or if you're hiking and you're in a place where you feel really still and calm and at peace, it can come in. 
Well, so what do Mormons say the Holy Ghost is? Well, they say, okay, so I haven't been Mormon for a long time, so I don't remember all my teachings. <laughs> But I know it's something to do it's with okay. the fall. You can just say you're a bad Mormon. <laughs> I was a bad Mormon. So I know it has to do with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So it's like, and, and it's all masculine. It's all like men. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. So it's part of the Godhead, right? The Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and that's just a Christian thing. The mm-hmm. idea of the three. Yeah. And Mormons are different, and a lot of Christians say they're not Christian because they they teach them as three different entities Mm -hmm. whereas the rest of christianity say that they're all like one yeah but it's almost like god manifests in these different ways like he manifests as jesus he he it manifests as the holy ghost Mm -hmm. like um and so it's called the godhead but it's really just one for the rest of the christian faith but in mormonism they actually teach the three so it was so confusing when i left the church all of this was just so confusing to me so i I mean i think it's confusing for active members too i don't think they really understand it it, even as we look for scriptures on what the holy ghost is and for like (laughs) teachings within the lds church about the holy ghost they contradict each other sometimes yeah yeah, and I, yeah, even like some of the stuff we were looking up, some of the the um, paragraphs that we were reading, and like they okay, they didn't really explain that. It just felt like yeah. a circle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they like to do that. Well, it's like the Holy Ghost is a, a tangible being, and then another one mm-hmm. says the Holy Ghost cannot be tangible, and then one says the Holy Ghost isn't everywhere all at once, and another one says that the Holy Ghost is everywhere all at once, and so they it's almost like. I don't know. I guess whoever decides is teaching that week decides who <laughs> the Holy decided. Ghost is. <laughs> I know. It was so confusing for me as a kid, too. A lot of times, most of the time, all of the time, it was just my head, my brain. That was my... my it's like the voice inside your head. You just start to call it the Holy the Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Instead of, you know, from where I'm at now and when I actually take time to feel spirit... I, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with saying that, um, is when I, again, am calm, quiet, and I'm listening. Uh, so it's not just uh, all the time, because I've noticed that when I was like active and young, it was like, even if I was trying to decide where I should go um, outside to play, if I should go over here, here, and I'm like, well, let me ask the Holy Ghost. And then I'd just be like, well, my, you want to go that way. It was just my head. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's almost like, um, we're creating an imaginary friend for Mm -hmm. adults, right? For them to talk to and interact with. Um, and then because we are intuitive, instinctual beings, occasionally it's right. Mm -hmm. And we're like, (gasps) oh, well, and I actually, praise the Lord. Yeah. (laughs) I actually liked what you were what we were talking about before we started this. You were talking about how you thought maybe you first felt the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, and um, well, yeah, because I I know for me and I know for so many members I've talked to, they really hang on to those spiritual experiences, and they're like, well, yeah, none of this makes sense. So maybe the church having one hundred and fifty billion dollars in tax evasion doesn't make sense, but (laughs) I have had spiritual experiences, so I know it's true. So I will Mm -hmm. not leave. And I know like I hung onto that too, those like really Mm -hmm. strong, um, spiritual, I think I would more call them emotional experiences that I had. More emotional. Yeah. There Uh was definitely a lot of blocks for me when I left because of, um, that teaching engraved in me since I was a very small person and then just this one, I didn't want to have anything to do with the church. So I just did not even want to feel anything. Cause I was like, I don't want to feel the Holy ghost or anything come into my life yeah. because I choose not to be a part of this. So it's very, um, yeah. Confusing. They, they teach you that you can only feel God's love, God's love, the Holy spirit. If you're like in this elevated state of existing, mm-hmm. like if you go to the bars, you know, <laughs> or if you're around people who are maybe 
actively gay or sinning, you're not going to feel the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost doesn't exist in those places. Those places are dark places, right? And the Holy Ghost is this like <laughs> elevated higher consciousness. And so he only exists in like holy places, yeah. like the temple. Well, that's just judgment. So, well, and hate. And I think it just <laughs> creates this almost fear and paranoia because mm-hmm. I, oh my gosh, I have heard Mormons say this. We're like, you can just tell the light's gone out of their con- countenance. You can just see the light in their eyes has gone dark, you know? (laughs) Or I remember being at the airport in Salt Lake City and my mom being like, you can just tell they're Mormon. And I'm like, well, yeah, they have like six kids and they're wearing garments. Of course (laughs) you But it's the idea they have this like glow about them. And I remember when I was Mormon, like looking at the prophet Mm -hmm. or I think it might have been one of the 12 apostles that came to visit and watching him walk into the room and just being like, I can feel his presence like I can I can see like the the lightness around him like he's like glowing right Um, I feel like they put him on a pedestal so you're already feeling excited I mean I feel I mean I was looking for it you're like I'm actively looking for that they prep you for it god I'd feel the same way if Oprah walked in a room I'd be like oh my god there's the presence yeah (laughs) they have a presence when they walk in a room so there's like they're prepping you for that they're always that mean that Oprah has been chosen of god (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so it it creates this real cognitive dissonance yeah. when you start to encounter information that like blatantly shows you the church isn't true because if you've had these very intense emotional, yeah, psychological experiences feels, in the church, yeah, it feels like a brainwashing to me. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it confuses you. It really confuses you. And then there's like this fear if you do decide you want to leave the church, and there's this fear that you're going to lose all of this. Yeah. When you step away. I mean, not only are you going to lose your community. <laughs> and your eternal covenants mm-hmm. that allow you to be with your family forever. But you're not going to be able to feel God's love anymore. And you're unworthy. You'll become unworthy so you will not be able to feel the spirit anymore. Well, I worthy. really... Yeah. What do they know? What do they know? I know. <laughs> um, um, which is all lies. That's all fear. That's what narcissists do to confuse the victims. <laughs> yeah, they make you feel just unworthy and not good mm-hmm. enough. And they get you trapped in that cognitive dissonance and those just thought mm-hmm. tornadoes. Um, word salad is a, is a popular oh, yeah, term. I like where that. It's just like, like that, like when we're trying to find out well, what does the Mormon church say exactly about the Holy Ghost? And it's just word salad. Oh, it, we were researching and I, and I was like, there's nothing here. It's nothing's good. But like, we don't really know, even though it's one part of the Godhead and clearly yeah. an important part of our religion. Um, but yeah, it's interesting reflecting back on the spiritual experiences I did have And, um, I'd say I can kind of put them into two categories, um, emotional Mm -hmm. induced emotional experiences, um, or my own intuition. Mm -hmm. And like the first time I felt the spirit and knew the church was true was at my first EFY camp. (laughs) And we're in this like church, um, sacrament hall, whatever, and there's probably 300 teens, and we're singing that, oh God, what is it, As Sisters in Zion <laughs> um, du- duet that they do with the boy part and the girl part, and when the two parts came together, you know, mm-hmm. how it's just is like, and it's in this super acoustic, like, large room space, and it's just like echoing, and I just got super emotional, and all week we had been talking about how to feel the spirit, and feeling the spirit for Mm -hmm. the first time, and how you like, when you feel the spirit, you'll know the church is true, and I just started like feeling this super intense, like like tears kind of well up, Mm -hmm. and this emotions rise up, and then I thought to myself, that's the spirit, that's the spirit, (laughs) now you know the church is true, and then the emotions increased because it was like yeah. ah! and I'm just like ah! 
Because they were prepping you. And then I get to get up when we have mm-hmm. our next testimony, you know, in our little group of, of teenagers mm-hmm. that I was a part of and say, I felt the spirit and I know the church <laughs> is true. And it told me. Well, <laughs> and that's another thing they teach us at a very young age is how we bear our testimony, which is... Um, I don't know if other churches do that because I've only been. I don't. In... Maybe cult, like ones that are cults. <laughs> <laughs> you get up and you talk about why you believe the church is true, and, and to me, that again is another brainwashing thing. It's like when because it reminds yeah. me of like when you're learning a mantra, a mantra that helps you to um, heal your mind or heal your brain patterns and thoughts. But yeah, that's another thing that they teach us is at a very young age is to go up and bear your testimony that says, "I know the church is true." And I don't remember the rest of it because it's been so long, but... I know the church is true, and I am so grateful for my Heavenly Father. And then usually you cry. If you cry, it's even more spiritual. For my family, <laughs> and I know I'm not always perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just really funny because it's been so long since I've thought about this stuff. But yeah, so... And I'm so grateful to be part of this church. Yeah, but listen just to the words, I know the church is true. You're taught that in mm-hmm. a very young primary. There's no, I think think Mm -hmm. or I want to believe Mm -hmm. I mean you can say those things but people would be like "Mm." oh yeah you will be someone Mm -hmm. has some work to do on their testimony there's so much judgment in the church (laughs) so much good for them for working on Mm -hmm. their testimony not yeah (laughs) like yeah so you went up and bore your testimony after feeling that sensation I was a monthly testimony bearer I bore my testimony every month but I also lived out east and there weren't a lot of people wanting to get up so there's a lot of long awkward pauses and that always like would build up in me and it'd be like you know you know the church is true why aren't you getting up to bear like why are you being a coward and sitting here it's so different here there's a line of people because they cannot wait to talk about how amazing they are that's actually when I stopped bearing my testimony was when I came to BYU Idaho because I was like oh I guess there's plenty of people to do this here (laughs) yeah and it's almost an attention seeker it's like oh I had this experience feel like a brave Mm -hmm. vulnerable thing anymore it felt like you said like showmanship yeah look I had this experience I prayed and I felt the spirit and it told me to do this and then I did it and it was I was right oh yeah people love to tell stories Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, that's, so that's the other part. So they, yeah. they induce this like an emotional experience that creates what they have prepped you to believe is a spiritual experience. Like, hey, let's sit down as a group and I'm going to tell you guys about how this man was tortured mm-hmm. for you because you're such a sinful person. But first, let's all think about how sinful we are <laughs> and like all of our shortcomings and flaws. And now here, I'm going to tell you about this guy that loves you anyway. <laughs> Of course you're going to feel emotions. Yeah. Like, how would you not feel emotional yeah. about that? It's, it's emotional. It's it's spiritual. It's mental brainwashing and abuse and yeah. control. It's ownership. So you never experience these, because you do, when you're a Mormon, you, you are so involved in the community throughout the week and even on Sunday. It's like... You don't ever have time to experience this outside of being Mormon. So you just think that you're going to only have this inside this constitution. Well, and I was told, and this is one of the ways they contradict themselves. I was told that non-members did feel like the spirit a little bit Mm -hmm. because God loves all of his children. So like, you know, maybe you can remember, especially if they're trying to convert someone, like remember when you went to like the orchestra and you heard that really beautiful music and you felt like that welling inside, (laughs) that's the spirit. And so not, they're like retroactively like claiming every spiritual experience you've ever had and saying it's, that's proof the Mormon church is true. No, that's just being, that's, that's the gift of being human and enjoying life. Mm -hmm. Those are, it's a, it's abuse. It's yeah. like what abusers say to their victims. They're yeah. like, everything good about you is good about you because I gave it to you. Oh, so you're saying the church is abusive? <laughs> <laughs> Narcissistic abuse. <laughs> Gaslighting. Psychological abuse, oh, for sure. Definitely. And and then just the way that you're treated if you leave the church and the manipulation of how you will not have this anymore. And even if you decide to become a non-believer in anything, I mean, there's a lot of Mormons I know that like become atheist or ones that are just um, spiritual but non-Christian. It's like you can't even have this if you are. You're not allowed to feel yeah those 
spiritual things, no. those emotional mm-hmm. things. You can only feel those good emotions if you're Mormon. Well, as a human, you have a right to all of these things outside of any type of religion, um, constitution, building, whatever it is, because it is our innate right to have these things. It is just being a human being, and it's your choice how much you want to activate it. Yep. Yeah, and when I think about even the buildup to me having those spiritual experiences as a, I think I was 12, 13 years old, Mm -hmm. it was so, maybe I was even 11, I might have been younger, like a junior EFY, there was so much a feeling of like, you should be feeling this. And if you're not feeling this, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I know. And, and so there's this like build up in me where I'm, I'm like, when am I going to feel it? Am I going to feel it? That's Everyone okay. else is this, feeling it. I had it. the same thoughts a lot of times and too. Then, you know, you get me in a room with 300 kids and a week of brainwashing under mm-hmm. my belt and suddenly I'm feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, like I said, for me, there is an overlap with my own intuition and instincts because the Mormons just kind of like take intuition, instincts, and your moral compass, and they just like bundle all up in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And then they tell you, and also the Holy Ghost will tell you the church is true. So, <laughs> so yeah. you reject all of your instincts, all of your intuitions, all of your morality, yeah. unless it's, it's pointing you to the church. It's, it's hard. It's hard when you leave because you have to re- find yourself you have to learn to trust yourself like really trust yourself I think like a lot of ex-mormons who are so afraid of spirituality not that there's anything wrong with choosing different spiritual paths or even being an atheist Mm -hmm. but being like actively afraid yeah I think it's because of the way that they were taken advantage of in Mormonism oh absolutely it's like no I can't trust anything unless I can literally see it because I was so misled yeah when I trusted my emotions. I, I turned mine off. I turned it all off for a long, long time because I was so afraid if um, I heard anything or sensed anything or had like, I guess, a spiritual experience. I was afraid that meant the church was right. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> and, would make sense. You like, really didn't want it to be right. I know. <laughs> I, I just did not want to have to go back. I was like, I don't want to have any of these experiences that they told me I need to have to be, to be Mormon. To be Mormon. And so. Because they abuse them. Mm-hmm, yeah. So it took a long time for me to open that door again, but I even had to change the words in order to have a connection with them because I couldn't. There was so much trauma behind it. like Oh, yeah. I mean, we're so just even triggered by the word Holy Ghost or Holy Ghost. Heavenly oh, Father. I was just about to say. The Spirit. Yeah. I can't. God. I can't. Those words all trigger me so much because of the control and abuse uh, of them from my upbringing in the Mormon church. So... So maybe we can talk about spiritual experiences we've had outside of Mormonism now. Oh, wow. I've had, well, there's a lot. (laughs) My first spiritual experience outside of Mormonism was actually an experience that I was praying and trying to feel the Holy Ghost. And like I had learned to go still and to go calm and to wait, right? Mm -hmm. To be open. And so that's what I did with my prayers. I would just like ask and then I would calm the mind and I would just wait. And I was starting to find out a lot of this ex-Mormon, anti-Mormon stuff, you know, and I was like really unsettled by it. I'm like, well, I mean, by all accounts, science, history, archaeology, the church is not true. (laughs) Um, But we've had these spiritual experiences, so I'm just going to like pray and be open and wait for that reassurance, right? Mm -hmm. But what kept coming in was... You know it's not true. <laughs> as I call, as the water went calm and still, and peace came in, it was just this like, mm-hmm. it's not true. It's just, and I'm like, no, 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 no. It's got to be true. Come on, I'm doing the things. Let's try again. It's not true. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not true. Yeah, and that was really, really painful um, conclusion to come to. Yeah, so that's your that deep. Um, knowing that comes in and it's like learning to trust that even though it's like painful because you don't want to believe it it's like it's your soul speaking to you like 
you do not need to be, do not follow this anymore because you know, we know it's not true inside. Well, and I realized that all the other times I had prayed to know if it was true, I had prayed to know it was true. Oh. I had prayed to know it. Please tell me, like, is the church true? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, right? Yes. Oh, there it is. Yes, the church is true. This was the first time I had really prayed and been like, either way. Yeah. Either way, like this is what the things I'm dealing with, you know, here's the experiences I've had. I'm willing to go either way. And when I was in that place of like being willing to be open, yeah. That's when it came in that it's like, no, you you know it's not true. Like you've known for a long time it's not true. <laughs> You're like, well, bullshit. <laughs> well shit, I'm like married to this guy now and I have this degree now and it's just like my whole world is Mormon. A lot of a lot of life yeah. decisions have been made. Could you have told me sooner? Yeah. Well, I didn't ask. I wasn't in the place of asking sooner. So. You probably were afraid to ask. I was afraid to ask. Well, and it, it wasn't even an ask because you've already been told by everyone, family, mm-hmm. friends, parents, teachers, Everybody, yeah. everyone you respect has already told you it's true. And so you're just trying to get the validation for yourself so you can be up there on the mm-hmm. testimony stand too. Well, yeah, that's another thing. That's that's actually something um, in myself that's very different for me is um, all my spiritual experiences now are very sacred to me. And... I, I really don't want to share them with people because yeah. it's, it's like for me and it's for my soul. And I actually only share it with well, Jana. She's like my closest friend and person I trust the most. It's very few people I share. And it is almost like sometimes I will share my experience only if I know it's going to help someone I'm talking to. And, and it comes from a place of non-ego because... I'm my, it doesn't benefit me, but I'm like, oh, well this, you know, I had this experience and this happened and, and so I'm going to share it because only because I want it to help you. Yeah. There's not a specialness to it. Mm -mm. Like true spiritual experiences. I guess, I mean, I guess it depends on how wounded the person is. Yeah. Like they they can take it to mean like, I'm so special, you mm-hmm. know? Well, you see a lot of that too after people leave like one religion and... And then they get into even new age spirituality uh, and it's like, ooh, I see spirits. Yeah, Did you see spirits? Yeah, or I get so many downloads. I'm like, well, this is actually pretty normal. Like, Congrats every, on being human. Nobody's, nobody's <laughs> special. We all have gifts. We all have, it's yeah. Just, it's spirituality in yeah. us. Yeah, it's, we all have it in us. And access to mm-hmm. instincts, intuition, and morality. Like, we just, humans just come with that. We just all have it, but we've just been so disconnected from it for so long that it does feel very special when you start to get it back. Mm, I'm so special. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that just tends to be like a wounded person thing, mm-hmm. I guess. Maybe it's not yeah. unique to Mormonism, yeah. but there definitely is like in that bearing of testimony and stuff. There's the, It creates a feeling of something's wrong with me if I'm not feeling what they're feeling and so you try so hard to feel what they're feeling so you cannot be the broken one yeah well you don't have to try (laughs) it doesn't have to be that hard and something that has been really a big breakthrough for me is realizing it's okay to not know Mm -hmm. that's something Mormons always asked me when I first left is like well what do you believe in now like what's your answers now Mm -hmm. and I'm like I guess I don't know I don't know I and I don't think I'm supposed to know until maybe my soul being everything, whatever, is ready to when know. When the worms are eating me in the dirt, maybe I'll know then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe not. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot less pressure um, now. And the fact that I don't know is okay than when I was in this cult, this religion. Well, it's scary. It's, it's hard to let go of that having concrete answers for everything that it's almost this childlike need of like you know when you're little and you're growing up your parents Mm. have the answers for everything like why is the sky blue why is the grass green like you're like oh you're just a source of wisdom and then as you get older it's like you don't have that anymore and so you almost seek out maybe religion or philosophy or Mm -hmm. cult or cult (laughs) to try to fill that Mm -hmm. fear of i don't know but you know sometimes we just don't know until we know and it's, I think it's learning to just, to be happy in the moment and to live in the moment and live each day. And, um, it's, I, I find that it's, well, I could be, and I could be wrong, but I feel, I didn't feel that when I was in the church, I felt a lot of stress and imperfection 
guilt and shame, judgment, and like I was never doing enough. I was not holy enough that I was not going to make it to what the Mormons believe is like the top heaven. <laughs> well, even when I was Mormon, you know, and we talk about death and you know, the next life. And I remember even sitting in Sunday school and being like, you know, I don't know, but I just don't feel like it's bad. <laughs> I don't feel like there's something bad mm-hmm. on the other side of being alive. Like, I get that we're saying right now that we all know, but whatever it is, if the Mormons are wrong, I don't think it's a bad thing. And that carried with me over into being an ex-Mormon where I'm just like, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I can guess. I can maybe guess based off of spiritual experiences I've had, but I, in actuality, I don't know. It's not like I can give you something concrete or like I've died and come back to life. And so I'm, I just, I'm trusting the feeling Mm -hmm. that I have in my gut, my instincts. And that's that it's not bad. It's not bad. (laughs) Yeah. I, that's, that's like the perfect way to kind of put it. That's kind of how I have it as well. It's just this peace and calm feeling of like, well, I don't know, but I'm not afraid either. Well, and would you have any recommendations for people on rebuilding the trust of self? Oh, well, I'd have to think back how I even started doing that. <laughs> really? Do I, do I even trust myself right now? <laughs> oh, well, it, it was work. I, I had to get, you know, I had to take care of my mental health and I started my own personal spiritual practice and it was meditating. It was meditating and really learning, um, my feelings, what I was feeling. Um, it was also having like a therapist I can talk to that validates what I'm feeling. Um, so I was like rebuilding a trust there because before it was so muddled by the religion and then also my ex-husband. So it's a process. It takes time. And I also feel like creating like boundaries was really big for me too. I was going to say boundaries Mm -hmm. I think was big for me. Like learning I could set boundaries and um, protect myself. Yeah. And that saying no was okay. And it's become less scary to say no. It's actually feels really good now because it's, it does. It's like, no, this is what I want. This is what I feel. Um, You're feeling toxic. So I'm going to say no to you. And it's, yeah, it's been really interesting to see how another person reacts, or uh, or a religion. <laughs> yeah, I realized that um, part of the reason I had been so abused within Mormonism was because I'd given away my ability mm-hmm. to say no, yeah, and to choose me, and I let other people tell me mm-hmm. who I was supposed to be or what was right and wrong, versus yeah. learning that I can set boundaries, I can say no, I don't have to be like just so nice and like obligatory all the time yeah it's like so you become self-sacrificing when you're in the, yeah. the church and I'm like I don't want to do those things like no and like, it carries over into other like aspects of being human too like maybe a medical provider is trying to tell you that you're wrong mm-hmm. <laughs> or they're not listening to you or they're trying to misdiagnose you and you're just like no I I know what's going on with me like I know that's not I true. know what I feel I know my body and it's like no I this doesn't feel right I don't want to do this treatment or this surgery like it just feels wrong yeah so it's like you have to fight for yourself so I hope if you get nothing else out of this <laughs> you're like whatever <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Those crazy chicks that you at least take this idea that you can trust yourself and run with that. Yeah. And that you, all of these things that we just listed, your instincts, your intuition, your moral compass, the Holy Ghost, spirit, whatever you want to call it, it the whole package comes with you. It's, all, it's there. You have it. It's yours. And nobody can take that away from you. Yeah. You don't have to be worthy to have that. It's just you. It's Mm -hmm. just who you are. Who you are. (laughs) Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today at The Middle Path. You can find out more about Kat and Jana at thewildbliss.com and facebook.com 
slash the wild bliss. 